I want you to watch this clip of Elon Musk talking to Ben Shapiro. This is when they went on a trip to Europe to see the concentration camps, the Nazi death camps. And Elon talks about his previous trip to Israel after October 7th, seeing the sites of the Hamas massacre. And he talks about some of the takeaways from that. And I wanted to unpack what he says because he has some really important insights. After October 7th, you went to Israel and you saw the wages of horrific anti-Semitism in the various kibbutzim and, and Moshevim. I saw all the videos. I saw a lot of video. Yeah. Yeah. It was shocking to see... I think maybe the most shocking thing was to see uh, the, the delight in killing innocent people, like the delight in killing kids and defenseless women and men. And there, it was, there was no remorse, quite the opposite. I mean, as, that requires a level of indoctrination that is uh, extremely intense. Um, so, so I think that to solve that, you have to address the source of the indoctrination. Because no one, no one should ever be glad about killing some, some child. I know a number of, enormous number of Jews, myself included, are very moved that you continue to wear the necklace uh, in remembrance of the hostages. So I want to thank you for that, obviously. Absolutely. Because raising the profile of the fact there's still dozens of so men, many, women, and so children. Many, I, I checked before I came. So many hostages. I hope they're alive. I hope they come back. So let's talk about you know, the, the uptick in anti-Semitism more broadly. One of the things that's been hard to watch as a Jew, but also just as an American and a Westerner, has been the radical upsurge in anti-Semitic activity, just generally anti-Semitic sentiment, uh, yes. appallingly, <laughs> after October 7th. It's been astonishing, actually. Y yes, and I, I, I must admit to being um, somewhat, frankly, naive about this. Um, in the circles that I move, I see almost no anti-Semitism. And, and, you know, there's this old, old, old joke, I've got, like, this one Jewish friend. No, I, I have, like, two-thirds of my friends are Jewish, okay? <laughs> I have twice as many Jewish friends as non-Jewish friends. I'm, like, Jewish by association. I'm aspirationally Jewish. Um, so, uh, so, so I don't, you know, it's, I was like, what are people talking about with this anti-Semitism? Because I never hear it in, when, when, at dinner conversations. It, it's like an absurdity. Yeah, this is really interesting from Elon. Um... There's many points that we could touch on, but the key thing I, that I want to touch on is what he said at the start, where he talks about the um, the glee, the joy that the Hamas terrorists had when slaughtering men, women, and children and babies and raping them and abusing them and taking them hostage and torturing them. There was a pleasure. <clears throat> In fact, we even saw, we saw a clip of... Uh, well, it was a recording of a phone call of one of the uh, young male terrorists calling his mother saying, I've killed Jews, I've killed Jews, and they're all celebrating. And uh, Elon was astonished by this, but anyone that's paying attention to the culture in Gaza, in fact, anyone that pays attention to history more generally will see whether it's nations, empires, ideologies, groups of people, they've been prepared to do terrible things against the Jewish people. And the question is, and that Elon's uh, trying to grapple with is, how? How do you get to a stage where people can do things and not have some regret, but actually have joy? The answer has to be that they genuinely believe, and this is what really gets anyone to do an act of evil. They genu genuinely believe that this is the will of their God. Now, God doesn't necessarily have to mean God in the literal sense of God. It can just mean whatever they worship, whatever they consider the highest value. So for the Nazis, their God was the Ubermensch, the, the idea of the Superman and the strongest race, the Aryan race, and that was the God that they worshipped. And Hitler in some ways embodied that, and so that was their God. And so anything in service of that, they have to do. And so it's not just enough to you know, if you want to ser the Torah talks about serving God with joy. And so it would be good thing, a good thing for them to not just do what their ideology demands, but to do it even with joy in their hearts, because they think that's the highest thing to worship. 
And the same is true of Hamas and the radical Islamists today. They genuinely believe that it is the will of God for them to annihilate the Jewish people and the Jewish state. And so if that is the highest value, if that is the will of God, if that's what their entire life is all about, then they should do it and do it joyfully. I know it's completely sick and perverse and heartbreaking, but we have to understand what's going on in order to deal with this. And therefore, this is why on JTV, we keep going back to talking about Judaism, trying to promote philo-Semitism, not just tackle the anti-Semitism and to t tell, tell the world about who God really is, because that's going to be the ultimate solution here. The ultimate solution to people worshipping non-gods that pervert the will of God is to tell them who God really is and what God really values. That's the only way to dismantle all the bad and hateful and perverse ideologies. And that's why the Jewish people are ultimately going to be the root of the solution to all of this. We have to become unequivocal in telling the world who we are and that the God of the world is the God of Israel. And the God of Israel gave the land of Israel to the Jewish people, assigned it to them as an eternal, inherit eternal inheritance and commanded them to become his emissaries, his voice to the world. And we have a duty, having been chosen, to tell the world about that message. We weren't here and we weren't brought to the world to preach to the world about democratic values or international law or secularism. We were brought to this world to tell them about God and God's values and his vision. And we've made a lot of progress, but there's still clearly more to do. So we're dealing with a very religious people who genuinely believe they're serving the will of God. So we're going to have to tackle that to get to its roots. And uh, I think that's the only way you can possibly explain it. People think they're serving God in what they're doing. Now, let's also be clear that it's no doubt um, may it may also be they're, they're um, serving their own purposes as well and serving their own lusts and hate and, and jealousy or whatever. But the only way they're able to justify it is to pin it on an ideology. And we've seen that people, through hearing their own conscience, through being de-radicalized, through getting re-education, through rediscovering the real voice of God and morality, they are able to change. We look at people like Mossab Hassan Yosef, the son of a Hamas leader. We look at someone I, we did a, a video about uh, yesterday whose name was uh, Mohammed Massad. Um, we did a video about him yesterday uh, and he was a um, terrorist that became a, a peace activist and a lover of Israel. So we see that people really can, people can change, but they need to be educated. And so the key thing is, yes, we've got to do what we have to do militarily. Yes, we've got to do what we have to do to fight the hate and tackle the double standards, of course. But the root is going to be ideological change and the Jewish people will lead the way in doing that. Hi, thank you so much for watching. To watch another one, click here. To stay up to date with all our content, click here to subscribe. And if you're able to, you can help support JTV to grow and grow by clicking join below this video, where you can become a member and get perks, including early access to videos and private live discussions with me. But most of all, you'll be partnering with us on our mission to change the world.